is one of those I don't remember cases. And what has he got to lose? As long as the governor has no ulcers, loss of memory is a passport to immunity from the hot seat. You think he's faking? No, I don't. If he were, he'd be normal. He'd be just an ordinary liar. His brain would act as a break on his emotion. But he's not. And that's the danger. A medical professor of Harvard once said... Attention, please. The sage of the sagebrush talking. I firmly believe, the professor said, that if the whole materia medica was sunk to the bottom of the sea, it would be all the better. I know that one. It would be all the better for mankind and all the worse for the fish. Very funny. Proves what? Proves we stink. You, I, all of us. That's what it proves. Huh. There's a killer on the prowl, and we're the ones who stink. He doesn't. We do. If he's insane, he's sick. And if he's sick, he needs help. But he doesn't want help. Uh, maybe he does. That would be funny. Is that why he broke out? To look for another doctor? No. To look for another victim. Who was the first one? Rose Marie, his girlfriend, co-ed at Southern California, where he got his law degree just before the killing. The boy was adopted. His foster father is Cyrus Barrington. Does that mean anything to you? No, not exactly. Sounds like chairman of the board or something. Like oil or big steel. What interests me is what's underneath that glossy surface? What about the real parents? It might be a case of hereditary insanity. We have no way of knowing. We can't dig into his past. He has no past. He has no family that could give us a clue. That isn't the point, Doc. There hasn't been one successful escape in the annals of the institution. And I'm going to see to it that it stays that way. Good night. Good morning. Good night, Ezra. Thanks for that brain stuff. Come on in, son. Got the green light. You know, you're a strange duck. What's strange about me? I'm an open book. Yeah, in Sanskrit. Why didn't you turn me in? Why didn't you? You've got something there, son. Why didn't I? Why the deuce didn't I? I know what it is being fenced in. I got sick of jealousies and conventions. A million elbows in my ribs. The smugness of the human mind, which pretends progress and civilization and has nothing to show but depressions and destruction. I'd rather argue with turkeys and books. Talk to a growing plant and have the howling wilderness sing me a lullaby. <laughs> Nothing ever happens around here. But when it does, it must mean something. Call it fate. Call it a challenge. I'm not superstitious. But I guess I just have to meet it. Got caught. That's what it amounts to. And you're out 200 bucks. That's right, son. Besides being full of fancy fumes, I'm no businessman, I reckon. I'll get the money, though. Don't you worry. How? I'll put you to work. 50 bucks a week. Four weeks, 200 bucks. <laughs> Maybe I'm a businessman. <clears throat> of all noises, I think music is the least disagreeable. Don't you? You heard what the man said? I'm a killer, a menace. <laughs> and I'm an accessory after the fact. You may have the life of an innocent girl on your conscience. If I did it the first time, 
I might do it again if it's in me. The man could be right. You give yourself the benefit of the doubt, don't you? That's all I do.